<laughs> Trying to crack the uh, stiffened, stiffened, just woke up face muscles. <laughs> Love it. Kind of crack the uh, little eye creases. It's just the hooah. It's just the weekend shaking off the weekend. Yeah, usually weekends are relaxing, but it's the weird morning late. Yeah. All right. All right. Uh, so I know there's a lot of people that have been waiting a good long while for the best Irish whiskeys for advanced whiskey drinkers video. That's true. And uh, every time I brought it up, I've been promised, oh yes, we'll do that next time. We'll do that next time. Now, here's what we're going to do because he just promised we're going to do I it did. Friday. For Friday. And if that doesn't happen, I'm going to give you Daniel's personal phone number. <laughs> and you need to call him. And, and did we already take suggestions? Give him so much. Yes! It's been so long. Yes, we did. I know I have a spreadsheet and you, somewhere. And I just you haven't said, looked at it for a you while. You said, hey, those Irish suggestions, those were good suggestions. Okay, good. The, it's just been so long. Yes, it has is my point. <laughs> I forgot. Yeah. All right, well, today it's another patron saint day. Brendan Kite sent us another one. And this one's going to be kind of fun. I'm actually was looking forward to this one. Brendan Kite, you patron saint of whiskey. See if anybody catches that reference again. All right, so this is the Glenlivet Code. Yeah. Now this was. How did we go from uh, doing no Glenlivet ever to two Glenlivets within very close proximity to each other? I don't know. Science. <laughs> because. Uh, Brennan, so this is inspired by the World War II code breakers. Oh. But this is Ooh. crafted by the master distiller, Alan Winchester. Super fancy. And oh the trick is... Look at that ball. Isn't that cool? I know. Yeah. Wax and everything. Well, it's, not, it's not wax. It's, I think it's metal. Is it metal? Yeah. The trick is to figure out if you can figure out the tasting notes of this whiskey that the distiller selected it for, blindly. And you can actually take their test yes. on the website and see how close you get to it. Okay. So I took it this morning. Right. I'm gonna have you take it and right. see who gets a better score. Okay. And I should write down my score first. But so what if the distiller was wrong with his opinion? <laughs> yeah, exactly. So no, that's not why no, you That's chose. actually a point. The point is that you're not actually trying to guess an objective reality. You're trying to guess what the distiller found in it. And part of that problem is the distiller is intimately familiar with all the tasting notes in his whiskeys. And so he can tell slight variances in any direction yeah. that to us of course. would be totally invisible. There may be a flaw in this plan. Yeah, how so? And I could have... I could have overcame it. I could have pretended to be, you know, valuable in this episode. Wait, I'm writing down my percentage. Okay. That's all I got. Can you see that? That's all I got on the first run. Do I have to I only tried it one time. All right, so it's either gonna be an advantage or a disadvantage. I brushed my teeth like 15 minutes ago. Oh yeah, that's a disadvantage. It's a disadvantage? Yeah. It's not gonna make me more sensitive? No. No, because you, take, the, taste you, of, you uh, take a sip of orange juice after you brush your teeth, it'll take your damn head off. Yeah. Because it's just, I don't know, this may be... Maybe, maybe you got an edge. Yeah. Now I'm going to give you my, uh, well no, I'm not going to give you my tasting notes yet. Was it just me? I'm going to give you, uh, I'm going to give you this. I'll ask you questions, how about that? Okay. And what? then we'll talk about it. Okay. Okay. Were there questions on to the To start text? with, on the nose. Were there questions? Yeah. Are you getting caramel, toffee, or dark chocolate? I'm gonna go uh, toffee. Mild, medium, or intense? Oh, that's, see he's gonna wanna say it's like uh, medium, it's mm -hmm. actually mild. Okay. In the world of scotch, it's mild. Red apple, peach, or fig? Ooh, I'm, man. Red apple, peach, oh, well, good lord. It's either fig or red apple. I'm gonna have to say red apple. Red apple, My, mild, medium, or tense? intense? Uh, that's gonna be medium. Medium, okay. Uh, cinnamon, vanilla, or treacle? The, uh, you know. Not cinnamon. Treacle. Treacle. <laughs> <laughs> Remember you guys done? Yeah. Because no one knew, neither one of us knew what the hell is treacle. Yeah, it's like we're, we're in Texas, damn it. It's called molasses. We're not from Vermont. Uh, what were the options? Cinnamon, vanilla, treacle. 
It's either vanilla or a tree of coal. I'm okay. gonna say I'm gonna say vanilla. Okay, mild, medium, intense. Uh, let's go, man. Everything about this is mild for me right now. Let's just say medium. Okay. Floral, dried fruit, or smoke? Not smoke. Okay. Floral or dried fruit? Uh, I'm gonna say floral. Floral, mild, medium, intense. It's gonna be medium. Okay. Now you're in the taste. Actually, actually, I'm gonna say intense floral. Oh, I'm gonna see if I can go back. Oh, Hang don't on. worry about it. Don't worry about it. Oh, I'm adding intense. Okay. okay. Taste time. Yeah. Okay. Pear, orange, or cherry? It's gonna be pear. Pear, mild, medium, intense. It's gonna be a medium. Okay. Pineapple, banana, plum. Uh, I'm gonna have to say plum. Okay. And level? Um, mm, that's a light plum. Okay. Uh, ginger, nutmeg, or raisin? Raisin. Mm, okay. It's gonna be an intense raisin. Okay. And licorice, boiled sweets, or cinnamon? Licorice, boiled sweets. Okay. I'm gonna say boiled sweets just because I don't think it's licorice or cinnamon. cinnamon. Okay. Yeah. And intensity? Uh, let's say intense. <laughs> okay, why not? Yeah. All right. You got 34%. Oh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> it says apprentice distiller. Now, I found, I found somebody online right. who got 100%. One of the reviewers, he says. Now, he does have the screen capture of 100% on his screen. Mm -hmm. So, how many times he tried it? <laughs> who knows? So, what was their... What I were got... The, what were the right answers? There weren't... They won't... They're going to announce it at the end of the year. I know. All right. I got 48%, which just said, good job. <laughs> a pat on the head. Yeah. At least you tried. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> nice try, you fake psalm. It's a part parti <laughs> participation. Yeah, it's a participation <laughs> trophy. <laughs> yeah. I got my, hey, if this is a participation trophy, yeah. I am all for that. So, did we just totally give the tasting notes for this? No, because you only got 30-something percent. So take a third of those. <laughs> but only you don't know which third. <laughs> you don't know which one. And you'll get... But yeah, those were the tasting... Those were very similar to what I got, too. Yeah. Yeah, so the the fact that there were, like, banana and mm -hmm. cinnamon and stuff, like, man, I don't know. I'm going to see if I can do a quick recap on the one I did. You want to read any comments while we're doing it? I don't think people want to go through that again. Yeah, you're right. All right, we got the Alec Miller. I love Whistle Pig, but I am part of a snobby group that absolutely hate it because in the past they lied about sourcing and such. I have only been into them for about a year. Uh, so all I see is the super honest version today. Are you aware of the controversy? And yeah. was it even a big deal back then? The, the thing is, uh, in the early days of Whistle Pig, a lot of people were just sourcing things and then just branding it. Mm-hmm. And uh, the, none of them were actually saying, we distilled this. Right. But a lot of them were leaving out the legal requirements of where it was distilled. Mm -hmm. Right? Whistle Pig in the very early days fell susceptible to the sort of, let's just not mention it. Yeah. <laughs> so sort of. More and more, right? it seems like more and more distilleries are becoming okay with the fact that it's better to be honest, yeah. because for a long time, it seemed like back in the day, less so, but still to a certain extent today, people were like, oh, we didn't actually put this in one of our stills, we're going to obfuscate what's going on here. Yeah, yeah. You and I have actually had conversations mm -hmm. with other distilleries that are doing this, and we yeah. say, hey, here's the deal, man. Get your act together. Yeah, there's the reason why we know why you're trying to kind of shade, kind of hide what's going on here. Here's why that's bullshit. And here's why you're doing yourself a disservice. Yes, absolutely doing yourself a disservice. Because right. if you are sourcing things from somewhere, and then you are hand selecting how you're going to blend them and bottle strength and all that kind of stuff, you are actually doing something to the whiskey that not everyone who sources from that place does. And if it turns out to be something really magical, that's something to be proud of. And you're going to miss that chance to talk about it if everyone's freaking out about the fact that you lied or were uh, vague about where it came from. Now, mm -hmm. Whistle Pig corrected in the opposite direction, and now they say, we rescued this whiskey from Canada mm. <laughs> for, from misuse as a blending whiskey. Yeah, we've actually... And so, I think they're doing a great job now, and anyone who wants to shit on Whistle Pig now, get over it. It's just a discussion to help them understand they're focusing on the wrong part of their craft. If you go to a restaurant, do you get mad at the chef 
that he didn't raise the cow and butcher it himself before he cooked you an amazing steak? Mm. I do. Yeah, well, you're rare. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I, I, feel, I feel like there's... Um, no, there's a difference. There's different kinds of whiskey drinkers. There's a lot of people. Most people, they really just care if it's good. Yeah, if a chef comes to the table and says, look, we got this steak from a small farm who raises all the cattle by hand in their own living room, <laughs> and they, they feed him only the best of foods, mm -hmm. and then they uh, uh, lay him gently to sleep on a pillow right. as they sing him songs into the gent gent night, gent light. And then we have a butcher in town who's local, He put, and then I'm going to make you this amazing meal. Well, that's great, right? right. But if, a but if the chef is like, I did everything myself, and then you meet him at, the, at like this Costco, <laughs> and he's buying <laughs> chunks of steak, and you're like, hey! <laughs> and he goes running off. That's kind of the same kind of problem, right? It's like, look, we were very careful about where we got our whiskey and where we selected and which barrels we chose. And then after we got it, here's what we're going to do with it. There's nothing wrong with that, I don't think. Matthew Hansen, okay, going to the nerdy section. Why are all the barrels that you hear of oak, American, French, Japanese? Whoa. We've talked about this before. What other barrels could substitute? Ash, maple, mesquite? mesquite. We've talked about this before. Oak is just a good wood. It's a good wood. It just happens to be the right density and yet not overly dense so that it doesn't leak and it still breathes. It's just the nature of the beast. See, there are plenty of people using other types of oak to try things, um, or other types of wood, but nowhere are you going to have the same kind of acceptance of it because of its perfect middle ground. We asked a cooper in the Whiskey Tribe about this. The Weddell. The Weddell. And he said they've actually tried using um, red oak. Yeah. And it smells like like somebody peed on the barrel and it leaks. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. So they're trying other stuff. Um, I would. Re I really want to know what his notes are, yeah. So I can argue with them. We should revisit I'll, this once they release. The I notes. really want to argue with the master distiller <laughs> of his own product that he spent years crafting, mm. dialing in. Wait, wait, wait. Thomas Foster. Okay, ditch this because we're gonna end this video with a happy birthday. Okay. To one Josh Gaberbaby. Oh, Josh Gaberbaby. Gullum and the Henny? Yes. It's your birthday. Happy birthday. Happy birthday. Finally old enough to legally drink. Oh. I'm so sorry. <laughs> I've poured that man so much whiskey. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Josh, good big baby today. You happy birthday, happy bastard? Happy birthday, you patron saint, because he is a patron saint. Ha, 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 Here's to fighting, stealing, and drinking. If you fight, may you fight for a friend. If you steal, may you steal lovers' hearts. If you drink. May you drink, drink with us. That guy was totally wrong, by the way. <laughs> hey, thanks for hanging out with us in the Whiskey Vault. Don't forget to throw in a like, hit that subscribe button on the bottom right, and drop a question or comment down below.